Amen. 750 years before Jesus was born, the great prophet Isaiah wrote these words, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You've heard this passage of Scripture from Isaiah quoted many times at the Christmas season, and we love quoting it at Christmas time because it is a great description of the baby Jesus. In this short passage of Scripture, Isaiah gives us five names of our Lord and Savior. The first name is one of my favorite. His name is Wonderful. And indeed, He is wonderful. Jesus is wonderful. He was wonderful even before he was born. Jesus was wonderful when, as the second person of the Godhead, he created the heavens and the earth. He did a great job, don't you think? He was wonderful. And he was also wonderful when he became a man. When the second person of the Godhead became a man, he was wonderful. And in doing so, he permanently identified himself with the human race. We're the only creatures in God's universe that he permanently identified himself with. He became one of us. And in doing so, he had to humble himself, but at the same time, he elevated us. Jesus was wonderful when he created the heavens and the earth. He was wonderful when he became a man. He was wonderful during his life on earth. He was wonderful during that Three and a half years, he walked the dusty roads of Judea and Samaria and Galilee, feeding the hungry, giving sight to the blind, enabling the lame to walk, cleansing lepers and raising the dead. He did a wonderful, he had a wonderful ministry during that three and a half years. He was especially wonderful when he died, because in his death he provided a way for men and women to escape the eternal consequences of sin. Jesus was wonderful. When he created the heavens and the earth, he was wonderful when he became a man. He was wonderful during his life on earth. He was wonderful when he died, and he is wonderful even today because he is preparing to come back and come back soon. He's going to sit on the throne of David, rule the world in righteousness, and at last we'll have somebody on this planet that knows what he's doing. And he knows absolutely what he's doing, going, doing, and what he's going to do. And at last, we'll have a leader we can worship. Isaiah, let me rephrase that. They worship some of the ones that are out there, but they don't deserve the worship. At last, we'll have a leader who deserves our worship. Sadly, people do worship these yo-yos. It's, it's amazing to me, but they do. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus is also a wonderful counselor. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. In telling us that Jesus Christ would be called Counselor, Isaiah is telling us that Jesus is the one we can go to for good advice. And good advice is something we all need because, for the most part, you and I really don't know how we could live our lives the best way. Jesus is one we can go to for good advice on how best to live our lives. He's the great counselor. To begin with, he's a great counselor because he's God, and as God, he knows everything. He knows everything that's ever happened. He ever knows everything that's happening now. He knows everything that will happen in the future. Paul put it this way in Colossians chapter 2, In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him is all wisdom and knowledge. And I think we would all agree that having a counselor who knows absolutely everything is a real plus. <laughs> Second reason why Jesus Christ is a great counselor is because he is also a man. And as a man, he understands the problems we have as human beings. The writer of Hebrews put it this way, Therefore it was necessary for Jesus to become in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. When we come before our Savior, we're coming for someone, before someone who is not only God and knows everything, 
but someone who was a man and is a man and knows some of the problems that go along with being a man. Third reason why Jesus Christ is a great counselor is because he knows us and he knows that we're not such hot stuff. I'm not aware of that, <laughs> but he is, and it's wonderful to know that our counseling sort of knows us as we are. Jesus Christ knows us as we are, <laughs> but Jesus Christ, John 2, would not entrust himself to them, that is, the Jewish leaders, for he knew all men. He did not need man's testimony about man, for he knew what was in man. What's in man, Paul described it this way, it is written, no one is righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away and have together become worthless. There's no one who does good, not even one. Jesus knows this about us. He knows this about us, and yet he loves us. He knows who we are, and yet he loves us and loves us in spite of our wretchedness. He remembers, as the writer of Psalms put it, he remembers that we are but dust and takes pity on us. Psalm 103, for he knows how weak we are. He remembers that we are only dust. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will call wonderful counselor, mighty God. The third name that Isaiah gave to Jesus was Mighty God. There is, sadly, a certain uneasiness in the Western world with Christianity. And part of that uneasiness is the assertion that Jesus Christ is God, and as God, He is the creator of the universe, and as the creator, it's sovereign ruler, the one who calls the shots. People don't like that. Most men and women are willing to accept Jesus Christ as being a good and moral teacher. But to accept him as being the creator God of the universe is something else. Bottom line is this. An increasing number of men and women are unwilling to believe that Jesus Christ was fully God and that he has accomplished all that he claims to have accomplished. God undoubtedly anticipated this rejection of the deity of Christ, which is why he inspired the men who wrote the Bible to repeatedly declare that Jesus Christ is fully God. In the passage of Scripture we just read, Isaiah said that he is God. The angel who announced the birth of Jesus to Mary said her baby would be God. Luke Chapter 1, the angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. The angel who announced the birth of Jesus to Joseph said that the baby would be God. Matthew chapter 1, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah said he would be God. The angel spoke to Mary, said he would be God. The angel spoke to Joseph, said he would be God. And Jesus himself claimed to be God. John chapter 5. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus. They harassed him all the time, really. And they were harassing him for breaking what they believed were the Sabbath rules. He wasn't. But Jesus replied, my father's always working and so am I. So the Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him. For he not only broke the Sabbath... He called God his Father, thereby making himself equal with God. John chapter 10, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. John chapter 14, Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. John chapter 8, I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am the great Old Testament name for God. We could go on and on, citing examples of men and women in the Bible who declared that Jesus is God, but you get the idea. The pivotal issue concerning Jesus Christ is this, and it's the pivotal issue, it's the most important. 
Is Jesus Christ God or is he not God? If he is God, then all men should fall at his feet and worship him as Savior and Lord. There is no way around that. If he is not God, then we're all fools to believe in him. And furthermore, if Jesus Christ is not God, then he was either a liar or a lunatic when he claimed to be God. If Jesus was not God and he knew he was not God, then he was a liar when he claimed to be God. If Jesus was not God but didn't know that he was not God when he claimed to be God, then he was a lunatic. C.S. Lewis put it this way. It's a familiar quote, but it's worth reading again every so often. I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus when they say, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. This is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with the man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. I prefer the latter here. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. and He did not intend to. When, Jesus, when Isaiah wrote about the coming birth of the Messiah, he wrote that he would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Now, it seems strange to read that one of the names given to Jesus by the prophet Isaiah was Everlasting Father. It seems strange because one of the great tenets of Christianity is that there is one God, and this one God is a trinity composed of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And furthermore, the Father is not the Son of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father uh, and, and, the Holy, and the Son is not the Father of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Son of the Father. There's one God with three persons, and each person is distinct from the others. Trinity is a mystery. We don't understand it, but we accept it because the Bible declares it to be so. And now Isaiah seems to be presenting us with a second mystery when he wrote that one of the many names of the Messiah, Jesus, is Everlasting Father. To which we respond, how can this be? The Trinity is tough enough to understand. Why are you confusing us here, Isaiah? This is how I mutter to myself sometimes when I'm reading. Because somehow you expect me to give answers to these questions. And I look and say, I'm not sure what the answer is. But this one we have an answer for. The answer is this. The name Everlasting Father is an idiom used to describe the Messiah's relationship with time, not his relationship with the other members of the Trinity. And let me explain. The literal translation of Everlasting Father is Father of Eternity. Father of Eternity. In calling Jesus the Everlasting Father, Isaiah is calling Jesus the Father of Eternity. Isaiah is telling us that Jesus created eternity. He is its father. In calling Jesus the father of eternity, Isaiah is telling us that Jesus created a realm of existence where there is no end. And not only that, this is the best part. <laughs> Jesus created his children to enter that realm of existence where there is no end, a realm in which his children will enjoy pleasures forever, a realm where his children will enjoy blessings without end. He created eternity, he created us for it, a wonderful, unending place where we we'll only know joy. This wonderful, there's a wonderful passage in Psalm 16 that says this, You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And they say Christianity is stuffy and you hate pleasure. That's not so. Our precious Savior created this realm called eternity. 
where there will be eternal pleasure. And uh, a pleasure without end, and we were created for that. Isaiah 35, the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Jesus Christ created a realm of existence called eternity. He is its father. And he is going to usher his children into that realm called eternity where we will enjoy happiness and pleasure without end. And I am eager for that realm. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The fifth name Isaiah gave to Jesus was Prince of Peace. In calling Jesus the Prince of Peace, Isaiah was telling us that Jesus is the one who will establish peace, who would establish peace between men and God. When God created our grandparents, Adam and Eve, they were completely at peace with God. It must have been a glorious moment in history. And then they sinned. And their sin erected a barrier of hostility between themselves and God. Their sin prevented there being real peace between men and God. The only hope of ever having peace between men and God was to have that barrier of peace removed. And that's what Jesus did at Calvary's cross. At Calvary's cross, Jesus took the punishment our sins deserve, and in doing so, he removed that barrier of hostility that had separated men from God. He made it possible for men to have peace again with God. This is why Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Jesus is truly the Prince of Peace because he made it possible for men to have peace with God. We had it for a moment in the Garden of Eden, but then it was lost. Sin erected a barrier between us and God. And there would be no peace without that barrier being removed. And Jesus came to earth to remove it and to reestablish the peace with God that we lost. He is truly the Prince of Peace. For unto us a child is given, to us a son. Excuse me, I keep misquoting this. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These are but a few of the many glorious names our God and Savior has been given, but there are others. And for the next 11 minutes, we would like to introduce you to a, a, a few more names and descriptions. So sit back and relax and join us in worshiping the King. God's nature never changes. He is and he will always be. He is who he is. That's what his name Jehovah even means. means I am. Yahweh means he is. God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is Elohim, God, Judge, Creator. Yahweh, Lord, Jehovah. El Elyon. The Most High God. Adonai, Lord, Master. El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. El Alam, the Everlasting God, the God of Eternity, the God of the Universe, the God of Ancient Days. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. He is the Shiloh, the Peacemaker. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner, the Lord my miracle. He is Kana, jealous. He is Jehovah Enkadash, the Lord who sanctifies you, the Lord who makes holy. He is, he is a star. A scepter out of Israel. The cursed of God. The captain of the host of the Lord. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of powers. The rock of my soul.
salvation. My salvation. He is the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds. He is the day's man. The interpreter. My rock and my redeemer. He is crowned the crown of pure gold. The most blessed forever. 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 He is the forsaken. The worm and no man. He is Jehovah. Ra. He is my restorer. The king of glory. He who sitteth king forever he is a stranger and an alien. My strong rock, my rock in my fortress. Fairer than the children of men. The rock that is higher than I. The rock of my strength. The rock of habitation. He is as rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. The rock of my heart. The, the shield. shield. The rock of my refuge. The king and priest after the order of Melchizedek. A brother born for adversity. The friend that loveth at all times. A stone of grace. A friend that seeketh closer than the brother. He is his ointment poured forth. My well-beloved. A bundle of myrrh. A cluster of henna blooms. The rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. The lily of the valley. The chiefest among ten thousand. His countenance is as Lebanon. Yea, he is altogether lovely. He is my beloved and my friend. He is holy, holy, holy. He is a sanctuary. The great light. A son given. The mighty God. The Father of eternity. He is a child born. The Prince of Peace. An ensign of the people. The nail fastened in a sure place. A strength to the poor. Strength. A strength to the needy in distress. A shadow from the heat. A refuge from the storm. He is the rock of ages. A crown of glory and beauty. He is a stone. A triad stone. A covert from the tempest. From the tempest. He is as rivers of water in a dry place. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. As a hiding place from the wind. He is the king in his beauty. My leader. The everlasting. The everlasting God. He is mine elect. In whom my soul delighted. He is a light of the Gentiles. The covenant of the people. The polished shaft. Glorious. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is a man of sorrows. Despised. He's rejected. He is stricken. stricken. Smitten. He is wounded. wounded. Bruised. He is oppressed. He is my portion, my, my maker, my, my husband. He's the God of the old earth. The witness to his people. The leader. The commander. The redeemer. He is mighty. He is my physician. Jehovah Sid Canoe, the Lord our righteousness. David, their king. Their king. My resting place. My feeder. The plant of renown. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. He is the prince of princes. The Messiah. The prince. The strength of the children of Israel. The, the hope, hope of, of thy people. people. The ruler. He is king over all the earth. He is a refiner's fire. Holders of soap. My refiner. My purifier. Purifier. The son of righteousness. He is Jesus, Yeshua, salvation. Emmanuel, God with us. He is born as the king of the Jews. He is a governor. The Nazarene. Nazarene. The bridegroom. He is meek, lowly. He is the one of whom the Father says, My beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. The Son of the living God. Jesus the Christ. The, the Rock. The Builder. The Prophet of Nazareth. He is betrayed, mocked, crucified. The Holy One of God. My brother. The Carpenter. And his life is a ransom. He is the Son of the Blessed. The Son of the Highest. God my Savior. The Horn of Salvation. The Day Spring from on, on high. high. A Savior which is Christ the Lord. The Salvation of God. He is the glory of thy people Israel. Lord of the Sabbath. My healer. The Christ of God. My servant. The chosen of God. He is risen. He is risen. A prophet mighty in deed and word. He is the word. The word that was with God. The word that was God. The light of men. The true light. The word that was made flesh. He is the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. The Lamb of God. My teacher. Teach. The gift of God. Gift of God. He is Messiah. The bread of God. The bread of life. He is my meat. My drink. The light of the world. The door of the sheep. The, the good, good shepherd, shepherd that, that laid down, down his life. life. The scent of the Father. He is the resurrection. The king of the daughter of Zion. The corn of wheat. He is the light. The light. My Lord, Master. My example. He is the way. The truth. The life. Divine, scourged, crowned with a crown of thorns, crucified as the king of the Jews. He is exalted, glorified, the holy one and the just, the prince of life, the anointed, the prince and his savior. He is Lord Jesus.
Jesus. He is Lord of all. The Judge. Jesus of Nazareth. The Mercy Seat. Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the firstborn among many brethren. Over all, God blessed forever. Lord over all. The Deliverer. Deliverer. Lord both of the dead and living. The Minister of the Circumcision. He is my wisdom. My righteousness. My sanctification. My redemption. He is the foundation. My Passover. The spiritual rock. The head of every man. The first fruits of them that slept. He is the last hour. The quickening spirit. The image of God. His unspeakable gift. My peace. He is the offering. He is the sacrifice. The head over all things to the church. He is he that filleth all in all. He is a servant who humbled himself unto death, even death on a cross. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, the creator of all things, the firstborn from the dead, the head of the body, the church, the head of all principalities and powers. He is my all in all. He, he is, is our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is Lord of peace. He is our Lord of hope. He is God manifest in the flesh. He is the justified, the mediator, the righteous judge, the great God and our Savior. He is obedient, and His throne is forever and ever. And ever. He is the upholder of all things. The express image of His person, the brightness of His glory. He is Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and forever. The shepherd of the sheep. The great shepherd that was brought again from the dead. He is the minister of the sanctuary. And of the true tabernacle. And His flesh is the veil which was wrapped in two. He is the altar. The offerer. The forerunner. For us. Enter even Jesus. He is the priest. The priest. The high priest. The great high priest. The intercessor. The surety. The covenanter. He is the captain of salvation. The author and finisher of faith. The king of righteousness. The king of peace. He is crowned with glory and honor. He is the tempted. The merciful. The faithful. He is holy. Harmless. Undefiled. He is the shepherd. He is the perfect. He is my helper. The lamb without blemish. And without spot. The living stone. He is a cheap cornerstone. He is a precious stone. He is guileless. He is wild. He is the chief shepherd that shall again appear. The day star. My savior. He is the word of life. He is the life. He is that eternal life which was with the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the righteous. The savior of the world. The true God. The true God. The advocate. He is the advocate. He is the first begotten of the dead. He is the prince of the kings of the earth. He is, he is the almighty, which is, which was, which is to come. He is the beginning and the ending. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the first and the last. He is he that liveth. He is the tree of life. He is the hidden manna. He is the faithful and the true witness. At Christmas time, we sometimes put off to the side some of the other roles that the Lord Jesus played 
because we see him as a babe in a manger. But the Lord came because he loved you. When he put aside 